everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of So We Persist. I am one of your co-hosts, Myelin Pham, and I am joined by Jada. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jada. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a community relations representative here at the center and part of the IA team. And I'm Shaina Khan. I also use she, her pronouns. I'm the graduate assistant with the IA team here at the Women's Gender Center. So before we start our conversation, I would like to read um, the Oregon State Land Acknowledgement because we're all recording here from Kalapuyan land. Oregon State University in Corvallis is located within the traditional homelands of the Mary's River or Ampanifu Band of Kalapuya. Following the Willamette Valley Treaty of 1855, Kalapuya people were forcibly removed to reservations in Western Oregon. Today, living descendants of these people are part of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde Community of Oregon and the Confederated Tribes of the Siletz Indians. Indigenous people are valued contributing members of the Oregon State community and represent multiple sovereign tribes among students, faculty, staff, and alumni. Oregon State University accepts its responsibility for understanding the continuing impact of that history on these communities. Oregon State is committed in the spirit of self-reflection, learning, reconciliation, and partnership to ensure that this institution of higher learning will be of enduring benefit, not only to the state of Oregon, but also to the people on whose ancestral lands it is now located. So Maya, can I pass it back to you to introduce our topic for today? Yes, thank you so much for reading the land acknowledgement. Um, so yeah, so for some context for this episode, we are kind of going through some of our icebreaker questions that we we start off each of our IA team meetings with, and sometimes they're really fun, sometimes they're kind of deep. Um, but some of the last two have been really just like just fun ones we've had laughs about, so we wanted to share it with y'all. So for the question we asked ourselves um, at our most recent meeting, we said. If you had to share TikToks with a historical figure, which which historical figure would you would you want to share TikToks with? And this is a loaded question. As someone who watches TikTok and is probably way too addicted, um, I'm trying to not be though. So just a little note to y'all. Um, didn't I? I said Shakespeare. Um, I had a hard time coming up with historical figures all of a sudden. But I looked them up and Shakespeare just is really fitting because I feel like a lot of Shakespeare plays are kind of known for being really dramatic and comedic, even if they're not meant to be. Um, and I remember like reading them in AP Lit. I couldn't tell you like what they like Midsummer's Night Dream, Hamlet, all those. The one with, I don't even know, but I feel like that would be kind of interesting. Uh, show them maybe like couch guy or you know like TikTok dances they would be I feel like Shakespeare would just turn that into a play and it would just be amazing so we're not worried about you guys like I think if he saw a TikTok and wrote a play based on that like 400 or whatever years later we would not be able to identify which one it was they are just like all ridiculous already the ossification of Shakespeare um <laughs> Yeah, no, I just feel like because there's so many different sides of TikTok. So I'd be like, oh my gosh, what side did Shakespeare like land on? What side of TikTok would Shakespeare like? Do we think that Shakespeare would end up on Shakespeare TikTok? Or do we think he's like, because it's like the way we interpreted Shakespeare? So do we think that Shakespeare himself would end up on Shakespeare talk? Oh, kind of like how like if Jesus appeared these days people wouldn't believe how like if Shakespeare appeared now then people wouldn't listen to him he would yeah people wouldn't recognize him as Jesus I don't know that's not there's nothing to do with I wouldn't I don't think I'm interested in showing Jesus TikToks that's not my response I was just that was just an analogy I'm sorry Maya you you can give your answer I thought about this so I'm not gonna say my earlier answer but I've just been really obsessed with Abe Lincoln lately. So, <laughs> no, because, okay, I would want to show Abe Lincoln TikToks, you know, because he did all these things. And so I want him to see, like, how our country, like, progressed or maybe regressed. I don't know. I think that's a perspective thing. Um, we'd be like, look, look at what people are doing on TikTok. And 
show him all of that as well as like I would just want to meet Abe Lincoln I said this to everyone but it's like think about it you know we like know the heights of presidents Abe Lincoln is supposedly 6'4 I'm 5'4 he's a foot taller than me plus the hat I would want to meet him I'd be like President Lincoln sir you are like ginormous as a man but can I also show you TikTok it'd be really funny because I'm on like <laughs> right to look up at it like, yo can we take a TikTok together and just have him hold it out because I've also heard that Abe Lincoln has a terrible had a had a terrible accent like that it sounded like very watery and like oh not whiny interesting but it was just like I know he didn't sound like presidential is what I read and I'm like I would love to know like that's a TikTok in and of itself what does Abe Lincoln look, sound like Oh my god. Yeah, I've heard he has a really high pitched voice, which I think like for a lot of people that would ruin their image of him. So yeah, we should definitely make that TikTok. Yeah. See what happens. Be like, what's up? We're gonna have an OOTD slash a day in the life of Abe Lincoln. Quick day. <laughs> that would become viral. You'd become like the next what? Charlie D'Amelio? You can do TikTok dances with him. I'm too lazy for fame. Can never be famous. <laughs> too lazy for it. Abe wouldn't even need, like, you wouldn't even need to do anything to right. get with Abe. Just get the, sign me the one check. Yeah. Please. No, yeah. I think, so that was, that was, that was one of the questions we had talked about um, and a little bit of switch up at some times. But the other question was, oh, like, oh wait. I, I didn't answer who I'd show TikToks to, but like, oh. already. all my I, answers. I thought about the Jesus thing, and I was like, hey, wait, never mind. No, no, no. I was just talking about Jesus. <laughs> um, so, so I would, I would like go find Christopher Columbus and show him TikToks of people of color being so scary that he like wouldn't want to leave Europe and hopefully like wouldn't come over here and would just leave people alone. So that's that's my answer. Prevent colonization. <laughs> China has taken a very like anti-colonial like let's change history view and I love it I do because I can only imagine the look on his face because also we're all like women of color so first of all he would have to be approached by a woman of color <laughs> and then poor guy and then he'd be like hey check this out so I just love that whole the way that whole interaction could play out as part so my apologies for, for missing China. And China can start us off on this next one. So the question we had last time was, let's say that you were teleported back to caveman times. Let's say you have like all the knowledge, like, you know, Wi-Fi or like 5G, whatever. You could access the internet in essence. What is the first thing you would pull up on your laptop to share with a caveman? Or cave woman, cave. <laughs> we had such good answers. Like there was an enormous range of answers for this one, and mine again had to do with was like anti-capitalist and anti-like colonial. I don't remember what I said I would pull up, but like I think it was something. Oh, I said I would like show show them a video of like how terrible war is, so maybe people like would just never <laughs> st start fighting with each other. <laughs> some light readings here yeah. check this out <laughs> for me oh what i just said the first human trauma the first human trauma. oh my gosh yeah basically i have something to add after this but essentially my answer would be um i didn't i took it like pseudo seriously i was like i would show them flintstones and be like this you <laughs> i remember that <laughs> I laughed so hard. Jada was like, I've never heard China laugh like that before. Yeah. And then what else did you say? I don't know if I said this actually, the Cocoa Pebbles. You said that. Yes. <laughs> this you? This you? <laughs> Wait. Yeah. What were you going to add after that? Well, I was going to add, because, you know, I never really thought about it when we first had this conversation. But how would we communicate with them? Oh, let's assume we can like touch them and they know everything that we know. Or like we can we can always communicate with them. Yeah, because English probably wouldn't have been developed. They'd still be in the I don't know what language actually they spoke back then. Just like 
I have thoughts, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to. I'm like thinking assume. like what you would see in like Flintstones, like joke, like Neanderthal joking. Like I would think they would do some like sort of ASL sort of thing, but I don't know. I'm just like ASL. Yeah. yeah. All right, caveman sign language. Caveman. They well, they have, like picture. Caveman. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like they they have pictures, right? Is that what happened in Ice Age? They like carved things. They were true artists. I mean, we could just run at them holding our phone screens and <laughs> show them, right? You'll see it, right? That's, that's the whole point. Full of a YouTube video. Yeah, what did, I think I said like I'd show them a movie and they'd just be intrigued by like- Cars! No, yeah. I didn't say cars. Someone else said cars. Was it B? I think B said cars. I think I said Monsters Inc. or something. Or Monsters yeah, University. You said Monsters University, and I said like just the like the opening credits of Monsters Inc. would blow their mind. <laughs> yeah, like all the the music, and then like all the different colors of the doors. Like I feel like they would be like so intrigued, like a little kid, just like it's like so sensory. So I don't know. That'd be cool. I didn't really have a deep methodical approach, like. I said Flintstones. <laughs> That's such a hard question. I would have never thought that I would have been asked that in my lifetime. But yeah, always here to bring some wacky, wacky questions to the beginning of our meetings. Yeah. My first response when you asked that question was to ask a lot of other questions to clarify. And you just have to be like, no, just interpret it and answer the question. So when I was like first asked this question, or when I first posed this question, China had asked me a lot of like questions. And so I was like, all right. So I was asked these questions. Here are the parameters. But outside of this, I like do not know how much more I could give you. Like I, I would not know. Because I was like, yeah, you know, there's internet. Everything from when we are coming from has already happened. We've set up all the, like, <laughs> like for whatever reason, this works. Yes, they understand you. Um, but then I was like, outside of that, I like don't. I don't know what else to tell you about this. Wait, what were some of your like follow-ups, Shaina? Oh, I like, I had so many questions. So I wanted to know, like, are we showing cavemen or, you know, whoever, like early humans for their sake or for our own? Like, do we want them to learn something or are we like trying to learn something from them? And then I was like, I was trying to figure out the logistics of like, like how much of the internet exists? Like, are we able to show them everything that exists like at this second? Yeah, I like, I have a, I have a friend who does those like, you know, hypothetical, like, would you do this or this kinds of questions? And like, I ruined the game by answering, or, like by asking just way too many follow-up questions. So that's, that's my problem with hypotheticals. <laughs> I love it though. It's um, it's a good time because then I then I have to be like, oh my gosh, what kind of answers now could I get? Or if I leave it open ended and I don't answer, where where will y'all's brain take this? Yeah, that's part of the fun is seeing how people interpret the question. Yeah, the possibilities are endless. It's like a math problem, like a physics problem. You like may assume this is negligible seeing this hasn't happened <laughs> well i think b took the approach of helping the caveman because how she to, said how to shower or something like how to build a house yeah or like, I, yeah <laughs> which is like i mean i don't even know how i interpret it obviously i said show them a movie so i wasn't trying to help them i was just trying to like surprise them in some way but i mean b was b was trying to help this caveman you know wanted them to progress a lot earlier in, in history. <laughs> maybe maybe if we did help them earlier, we'd have a lot of the higher tech things we thought we'd have at this point, like flying cars or whatever. Teleportation. Actually, I don't know. Yeah. Really, it would be a oh, Sorry, yeah. We were also talking about like showering maybe would help with like public health stuff, right? If they knew how to bathe themselves. Think about then, it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, okay. Sorry. Um, we were also like, and then I, I wanted to know, like, why would we show them a video of showering and not just show them how to like go to the river and bathe? And I don't remember why, what we said. Well, I said, because like, we don't need to do it. 
because did because we didn't bring like products or things we didn't have those things so it's like why would we hop into like the lake water and do it like they would be cleaner but we'd possibly be dirtier than when we went in yeah that was a very practical answer i forgot yeah and i think i mentioned like the water aspect because back then there was only like one body of water you know or like and they would use that for like drinking and also bathing and cleaning and cooking and just everything you know like that just be i don't know i don't know how i feel about it yeah i would not get in that body of water you're right yeah, yeah. <laughs> also i depending on where we're at like i don't know what kind of animals what kind of monsters are in, in the water I'm like, I'm not built to survive. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not a hunter gatherer. I'm like, um, pops up. yeah. Yeah, I was like, y'all are like capable of doing this because this is what you did. I am not. I am a material girl. <laughs> I don't yeah. need to be bathing in the lake. <laughs> okay, I really want to show Abraham Lincoln the material girl music video now. <laughs> that's no. a music video yeah it's a song from where madonna oh you heard about the madonna one yeah i only know the tiktok sound that's like is that real girl <laughs> I don't know it's by, but it's actually like an actual song i think i am so old you all <laughs> no i mean we knew what song we were talking about at least that's good am i the caveman you all are showing the internet to <laughs> what's happening <laughs> no not <laughs> on the next episode of silly persist <laughs> we show china no it's like china China's culture no it's like china's out there we traveled back to our <laughs> <laughs> or china shows us videos no because we were talking about this too of like teaching china things or like china learning some things from us because something I've picked up and like use every now and again in like my everyday language that I shared with China was first of all, like, you know, another way to say like my guy, bro, dude, is my brother in Christ. And then to add on, <laughs> I've never heard of that. <laughs> so you go like my brother in Christ. And then if like the, 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 the person is acting like out of sorts or if they're, you know, not doing what they should be doing, you know, kind of like questionable behavior you tell them my brother in christ that is maidenless behavior <laughs> wait i'm so gonna say that now right it's it's effective christ. it's great a lot of people have used it for them just absolutely lose their mind they think it's great yeah and we were saying that like that would end up in a shakespeare play so yeah just become canon no, because you could use that in Othello. You could be like, my brother in Christ, Othello, that is made of behavior. <laughs> that is perfect. <laughs> or Romeo and Juliet. Romeo, Romeo, that is some made of behavior, Romeo. <laughs> Isn't there a saying that's like, if you can't, if you can't like educate them, then just confuse them? But that's yeah. like, yeah, I mean, Brother in Christ, but I'm gonna confuse people when I say that. My I told it to my mom over the weekend and she was like, What did you just say? I was like, my brother in Christ. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like a lot of our answers to these questions have just been about confusing the people that we're approaching. <laughs> Are we horrible? Nah. Are we bad? I feel nah. like we're just avenging ourselves as women of color. <laughs> way to wrap it up and put it in good words <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, next time. No. <laughs> <laughs> do we want to leave it there i i think we i think that's good if y'all if anyone watching this video wants to comment on any other questions we should ask or if you enjoyed hearing our take on some some fun icebreakers please let us know yeah slide into our dms like and subscribe <laughs> Thanks you all. Thank you yeah. KBVR for producing the episode for us. Yeah, thank you. Bye everyone. Bye.